Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be taking a look at all of the compatible games that you can currently run on Ryujinx, the Nintendo Switch emulator. So all of the games you can currently see in my right hand window and folder are the games that I currently have available to me. Due to the amount of time it takes to not only dump the game from your Switch cartridges, but also to actually decrypt and get all of the files into the correct folders to run on this emulator, they are the only games that I have been able to get for testing as of this moment. Currently, Ryujinx does not have controller support, so what I have done is I am using joy to key in order to map the keyboard binds that come stuck with Ryujinx, and I have mapped my PlayStation 4 controller to those key binds so I can actually have input in my games. Once you actually have all of your files in their correct formats for this emulator, it's very very simple to use. Let's get things started by dragging and dropping my 1-2 switch game file across onto the ryujinx.exe and by doing so we will launch it with the emulator. So there you go, you can see we are loading as cart and you can also see my game window is currently open and loading the game. And there we go, there is a 1-2 switch booted in Ryujinx the Nintendo Switch emulator. Now unfortunately, at the time of making this video, this is as far as 1-2 switch goes. It gets to this screen and then practically gets no further. The odd time it will go to a black screen and then the emulator will crash. Let's move swiftly on and check out our next title, another Nintendo Switch exclusive, ARMS. So in a similar circumstance, ARMS also boots to practically the same area as the previous game. We get our warning screen and then the main actual game title splash screen. It will then do one of two things. It will either go to the next screen where it fades to black, or it will get caught in an infinite loop on this splash screen right here. As with the previous game, this one boots but is not playable. Let's move on to our next title, Batman The Telltale Series. Once again, this game does actually boot and as you can see in our bottom right hand corner we actually have a loading cursor. However, this does not go into the in-game menus, it will simply freeze this icon right here like you can see it slowing down and then the game itself will close the emulator. Once again, Batman the Telltale series boots but is not playable. Next up, let's take a look at The Binding of Isaac. This game is actually quite playable at this very moment on this Nintendo Switch emulator. As you can clearly see by this gameplay footage on Ryujinx, this game is actually quite well rendered. It is also the first game title in which we are actually able to test our input support. By simply pressing A on my controller, I am able to navigate in through the menus and I can select any of these files right here to load myself into game. Let's actually load into game right now, I'm going to select file 1, I'm going to do a new run and I am going to select Isaac as my playable character. So there we go, we're now loaded into game and you can see by the frame counter in the top of the window we are actually getting quite a decent performance. In the vast majority of the titles that do go in game like this, for about the first minute or two you are going to get what I can only describe as, if you're familiar with CMU or RPCS3, it seems like there's some sort of shader lag that just seems to disappear the longer you play the game. Now I'm pretty sure it's not shader lag or anything like that, I'm only using that as a description to kind of describe what it feels like when you actually experience in game. I don't know if you can see it but my gameplay is actually becoming more and more smooth as I move around the room and perform different interactions. So The Binding of Isaac I would say is very playable currently on Ryujinx, this Nintendo Switch emulator. The next title I am going to be testing is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. So while you can actually load the game in the emulator, it currently does absolutely nothing and is not even bootable. Let's move on to our next game title, Cave Story. This game being one of the very first titles to boot on this emulator actually performs and runs quite well. You can see that we are easily able to navigate through all of these splash screens at well over 30 FPS. Now that we're into the main menu, let's just simply press A and try to actually get in game. You can see that there are actually some small opacity issues when we actually get into game and open our in-game inventory, you can see that there are some small issues with the actual rendering of these menus. However, when we actually talk about gameplay and playability, this game actually runs quite well on Ryujinx. As you will see when we come out to this next screen, there are still some render issues, you will quite easily see them when we move and jump around this area. Regardless of these render issues, this game is still quite playable. Next up on our compatibility list is Disgaea 5. In this game, we have another Switch title that does actually boot, load into its menus and actually launch into game. 
I have actually had to speed up the footage of this initial loading screen just so we could actually get to the game menus section. And there we go, Discaea 5 is now loaded directly into its in-game menus. We also have fairly decent input support and our performance is actually quite good considering that this game has only been booting for about two days now. These pre-game introduction scenes also work quite well and at decent performance. When we get into this small cutscene, you can see that while it is rendered quite well, there still are some fairly severe render issues with the ground and also with some of the rendered effects. I'm just going to skip this cut sequence and actually try to get us into game, where we are going to see that even though it is rendered quite well, there are still some fairly severe UI and character rendering issues. When we actually get in game, the performance is actually quite bad and when we couple this with the rendering issues, I could definitely not say that this game is playable. Let's move swiftly along and test our next game, Doom. In a similar circumstance to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Doom currently does nothing when we try to load it in Reusinx. Let's move quickly along once again to our next game, Farming Simulator for the Nintendo Switch. This title is another game that is only recently booting on this Nintendo Switch emulator. This becomes very evident when you actually see that practically everything is rendered upside down in this game as of this very moment. When we skip this cutscene and actually get to the in-game menus, while we can navigate them with our controls quite easily, all of the text and lots of the textures on some of the screens is completely broken. When we actually choose our difficulty and actually try to load into game, we can actually proceed as far as our character select. We can even choose which gender we want to play as and then what colour our clothes are going to be. However, when we do actually select our clothes colour and our character, as you can see in this hourglass icon, it's going to just stop and the game is going to freeze and not proceed any further. So farming simulator for the Nintendo Switch boots loads into the in-game menus but does not go in-game. Let's move along to our next title, Super Mario Odyssey. So at the time of making this video, and in a very similar fashion to 1-2 Switch and ARMS, Super Mario Odyssey boots into this initial input loading screen where it tells us information about our input devices. Performance wise, we are ranging anywhere between about 3 and 4 FPS to an upper limit of about 24 or 25 FPS. After a set amount of time, this screen will fade away and then we will be greeted with the option to select either regular mode or assist mode. You can even see that in this screen we do indeed have control over our inputs. However, when we do actually select which mode we want to play the game, for this circumstance I'm simply going to choose the normal unassisted mode, the screen will do its selection animation, fade to a black screen and then nothing else will happen. Super Mario Odyssey is currently bootable, but as of this moment does not render any 3D graphics and is not playable. Moving swiftly along, let's now take a look at Puyo Puyo Tetris. This title itself was among one of the first games to actually boot and run on this Nintendo Switch emulator. You can see that when we get to its in-game menus and load through this autosave section, you will indeed see that we have control over our inputs and we can actually load into an actual game. Let's simply select the Tetris option and see what gameplay is like. In my experience with this title on this emulator, it seems that the loading screens actually have worse performance than when we are actually in-game itself. As you can see, now that we are ready and our game has started, even though the performance isn't exactly what you would expect for a basic 2D game like this, it is still fairly playable. So Puyo Puyo Tetris boots, loads into the in-game menus and goes in-game. Let's take a look at another title which I have previously covered, Sonic Mania. So as with the last time I covered this game, Sonic Mania is still fully playable on Ryujinx. You can even see that my performance is even better than the last time I covered it, basically staying over 200 FPS at all times. You can however counteract this by using a frame limiting software, for example like RevaTuner Statistics Server, to limit your frame rate to 60 FPS which will give you a much more playable gameplay experience. Sonic Mania boots, loads into the in-game menus and gameplay wise is fully playable. Let's move on to our next title and another Nintendo Switch exclusive, Splatoon 2. 
So as with many of the other titles I have covered in this video, Splatoon 2 boots to this initial splash screen where it's about to load in game, however it does not proceed any further. From time to time in the bottom left hand corner, the Splatoon 2 logo will appear, but in my time experimenting with this game on this emulator I have never gotten past this screen right here. So Splatoon 2 boots, loads to its initial splash screen but does not go in game. Let's move on to our next title, Stardew Valley. So Stardew Valley, as with lots of other games, actually it does boot through its initial title screen and actually goes in game. However, as it is very apparent, the graphics are not correctly rendered at all. So Stardew Valley boots, loads into its in-game menus, loads into game but is not playable due to texture corruption. Let's move swiftly along to our second to last game for compatibility testing, Tiny Barbarian DX. In this title, Tiny Barbarian, we have another game that runs quite well on this Nintendo Switch emulator. This game boots, loads through all of its initial splash screens and runs at quite good performance once you actually get in game. You can clearly see that as we have previously seen in other titles, the first few minutes of gameplay are a small bit laggy, but once you actually get into game it will completely smooth out and become fully playable. I'm just going to quickly fast forward through this initial gameplay sequence. When our character dies, we will be loaded straight into the in-game menus for Tiny Barbarian DX. And there you go, you can now see that we have full input support and all of these menu options are fully selectable and fully functional. Let's quickly load into the actual single player game and see what performance is like there. So as previously stated, for the first few minutes of gameplay when you actually load into a level, you can experience small bits of lag and freezes just like you're seeing on screen right now. However, after about 1 or 2 minutes, even less in most circumstances, all of these performance issues will be completely ironed out and your games will become fully playable. So Tiny Barbarian DX boots, loads into its in-game menus, loads in-game and seems to be fully playable. Let's move on to our final title for compatibility testing, Xenoblade Chronicles 2. So as with Doom for the Nintendo Switch and The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 currently does nothing when you boot it in reusing the Nintendo Switch emulator. Hopefully in the coming days, weeks, months and years, all of these games that currently do nothing will hopefully work perfectly and to their full potential on this emulator. So that's about it for this full compatibility guide for reusing the Nintendo Switch emulator. As always guys, cheers for checking out the video, remember to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.